Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, and it's time for some more Kerbal Space Program Career Mode, where I'm excited I'm doing something I haven't done before, which is putting a space station out over the orbit of Kerbin. That's right, Orbitropolis is going to be a fantastic place, both for tourism and observational platform, observational platform and a staging point for future missions, and there's a boom, and that's my space station exploding. And Don Lee Kerman is sitting there just right in the middle of the cockpit, just saying, what the fuck just happened and I have no idea that's multiple times this time where I've had the sh things just explode while in map mode and I don't really know what's going on but uh, just to give you an update on my crew Jebediah is around he's not available right now for some reason he is assigned to Orbitropolis 2 which I learned later hits on the cockpit but yeah I had to hire a few other people and I'm gonna be sending some of my rookies out to do some basic space station slogging so this is Orbitropolis 2 because it's better than number one. And apparently we have doubles of them to put them on the launch pad. So let's go ahead and no, what the, what? <laughs> you wanted explosions in this series? You're starting to get them here. And I did revert there because I just honestly, no idea wh why that didn't work. That just felt like the game decided to go blah, blah, blah. Because I made no changes to my ship and was able to fly it again. And this time it's Kilver Kerman flying into the air and this is going to be a pretty basic launch this is a uh, asparagus staging fairly standard oriented stuff it's just going up to 150 meters per second doing the gravity turn getting high high into the air I actually hit my gravity turn a little bit late there and it's flying pretty fast but with the main sails you got to be really watchful for overheating but I am doing this accelerated in game or accelerated in video because quite frankly you've seen me get into orbit enough Getting into orbit with this space station is kind of the easy part, other explosions notwithstanding. So I actually do have quite a bit of fuel remaining in my ship, which is really nice. But the space station, what it's what it is going to be the most important part is that there are a lot of docking ports. You can see four there just shipped around two different command pods. I have two command pods here. One that has no crew in it, so there's more crew that can possibly go in there. So we're going to have a little bit of a jump as now this is in orbit. And we're going to revisit the space station here. But like I said, this is the first time that I've actually attempted this in game, and I am going to orient this ship as soon as I get the orbit stabilized. So you can see a little bit of rocking there. But I'm going to just reorient the ship so that it's facing one direction. That makes docking with it later much easier. But more importantly, that last engine and fuel tank that's on the bottom is going to go because there's a big docking port underneath the ship. So minor minor orbital adjustments in place. And Kilber Kerman is just going to be flying around sitting in the cockpit. And there we go. There's the last space debris flying into the sunrise here. So it's time to uh, release these arrays because I was dumb and didn't put them in an action group. There is some RCS on here, but most important part is that, yay, I have the beginnings of a very tiny space station. And one thing that I need to do and I want to do with this is to actually add means to make this a refueling platform. And that's going to mean adding some actual fuel tanks to it and adding some places for ships to go. And I am just having problems with freaking assembly today. <sighs> Donnelly, again, your ship is just exploding somehow for all of the explosions the command capsule survives but once again that's just the ship for some bizarre reason it just they just want to fall apart on me but here is the actual flying up I did make a few adjustments specifically I dropped a docking port on the nose of the ship and this is just gonna be flying straight into the space station I tried to do a few other methods for this but I think the first thing that I want to do here is add some extra docking ports to the uh, back end of the station instead of trying to squeeze things in with those solar panels that are there. So here's a little bit of teaching for you all. If you are looking to dock with something and you are behind it, you want to drop part of your orbit a little lower than the other place. So right here I have the periaps down to about 80,000 meters where my uh, periaps is 100,000. And what that lets you do is just let things catch up and then once you are sort of near each other in the vicinity, you can switch the velocity to target instead of orbital and that really helps just in terms of getting your orbital velocity in a certain place and we're going to be going over some docking a little bit more specifically because one thing with space stations has kept me from doing it before building something in orbit requires a lot of docking 
and this is the first time I've used things this big to dock and multiple RCS thrusters is actually much more of a hindrance I could not keep things under control you can see a second set there that I'm not using at all because for some reason they just weren't balanced or they were kicking things around actually I would try and fly to the right or left and they would go up down left and right but I do have my two big dock ports here and so far just eh, not close enough you gotta hit it very very precise and there's a giant shatter that I actually tried to see what the hell that was and I still have no idea what else is flying around that would have done that but second time nope and there are other camera modes that you can use I know some people prefer specific types of cameras like orbit or chase camera but I kinda prefer the free roam to let myself do that but you can see I added four docking ports and attached a big fuel line to the bottom here so here is my space station continuing in its glory and now Kilbert and Donnelly can be working in the same place here so there is the one command module that is some extra fuel that is some extra power bank that is some extra potential seating for crew but you can see here I do one EVA and that's not the right Kerbal here he's gonna be sitting in the pilot seat for this however Donnelly oh Donnelly you idiot for some reason he just got jettisoned here and he is floating into space 2001 style or I guess that's a dated reference now with gravity being a movie that I still haven't seen so we're just gonna call it 2001 a space odyssey he got ejected by Hal for some reason but fortunately he has plenty of RCS so get to do a uh, surprise spacewalk in this mission because all I wanted to do was to send him from his lonely command capsule to the uh, survival can that's under the utilities tab in the uh, ship parts area to where he can sit and relax and live in orbit for a little bit because that's what we do with our rookie pilots so gonna be doing some flying here I don't know why this is real time now and I don't know why there's no music in the background but a EVA report why not 1.6 science value I think that is the only science I get in this entire mission or video and like I said before this is something that although this is a career mode and I am wanting to gather science this having this orbital station here to help me or to help facilitate building things as we get some nice shots of Donnelly in front of the solar panels but having these things just in place will help me quite a bit in assembling much larger ships in orbit because you can launch gigantic things but fighting through that atmosphere so much sometimes it's better to piecemeal and put it together in space so here we go getting to the ladder that need be gotten to as we get some nice shots of Kerbin as well in the middle of the day and I really prefer to try and do a lot of my space walking in the middle of the day as if I can not just because it's brighter and easier to see but because uh, it makes for a better recording so there we go he cannot actually go into that can because it's full you can only have one pilot here but if you go down the ladder just a little bit and I got kinda worried that he'd screw up the solar panels but that is not the case there we go. Donnelly and Kilber can now chill out as I get a little bit of science on there. There's actually no communication arrays on uh, this space station, which is just kind of a conceit to the fact that this is not going to be a science platform because all I get is orbital science and there's not really a lot of worth there. But the other really important part of this, and maybe the most important part, is the tug. And uh, having a tug for this is just really good for assembling. We're going to talk about this quite a bit. By the way, to switch ships, for those of you who don't know or haven't looked at the hotkeys, use the bracket tabs or use the bracket keys. I have not. Actually, did not really know that myself until I was making this video. It's like, oh, brackets, of course. Let you switch between ships on the fly. You do have to reset your targets and everything, but it's a lot easier than going in and out of the map. So what I'm doing here first is just setting up the tug, which I had put on the top of the place and I'm just testing the RCS so far everything's good and all I'm gonna do here is once again practice docking because docking is one of the hardest things to do in this game but the more you practice the better you get and I actually really do recommend you start with a tiny 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 craft with four RCS thrusters on the side that'll just give you practice docking and you want to make sure that you set your controls so that you're comfortable with having not just the four cardinal directions I guess you can't really call them cardinal directions in space, but I'm going to anyway. But also the forward or backward thrust, because those are incredibly important. So you can see here we're going to do some basics in docking right now. I want to zero out, or as near as possible, zero out my uh, velocity to the ship. That means no forward, no backward momentum. And all I'm going to do here is just turn my ship around 
until I can get to that zero point. And then I'm going to be aiming, or at least close enough, because this is a tiny ship and I'm not going to do a lot of damage if I screw up things. But eventually, next I'm going to do is turn around and do a little bit of flying towards the ship. If you get one reason that I really prefer using RCS for this is because, as and we've seen this in prior videos too, is if you use uh, engine there, I have the LV-909 on the back, that can actually push the ship, even something like a space station. Not to mention RCS lets you go in the full 360 direction space. You can control it, although you can see that I'm having some issues <laughs> working out which way's up, which way's down. So after a little bit of fine tuning, and keep in mind that the target meter there, there are mods that will guide you directly to different docking ports, but at least as far as I know, you can't target a specific docking port. If that is mistaken, please let me know. That'd be awesome, at least very helpful in terms of the nodes and everything, because you can see the pink circle in the nav ball. Um, that is point. That's if I want to go to the straight up front of this, and that's not what I'm trying to do at all. So once you get there, once again, you want your momentum as low as possible. You want to hit the docking as slow as possible. And then you can see here, I'm just taking my time, trying to get the fine tune adjustments trying to go left and right, left and right, then go zero, zero. And I am using the free camera here. Once again, some people really prefer the chase camera for this. But I'm just going to be going forward, forward. You want to go at a very, very low velocity on this. And you can see that I try and stop until I get together. And eventually, it's going to wiggle like this. You turn off SAS, and it should snap together any moment now. Waiting for that snap, and there we go. It's back to one craft. So yay, we have a space station the tug is in place by the way if you want to designate something on the map as a space station just right click on the command module go to rename vessel and you can change the type the default is probe you can change it to a station even from the point of launch but there we go we have a tug in place we have Donley and Kilber both manning the station we have some debris about uh, almost a thousand or a thousand meters away so the next step in the proofing concept is to see that right now I'm really happy with my space station but I want to actually start getting some fuel up here so that's gonna kinda of be the next step as we do quick a quick IVA which is also very important this is such an awesome attention to detail by squad I really like the uh, different boxes especially the food and not food because that is an important distinction you can see the solar panels right outside and junk rubbish refuse trash and laundry but yeah, apparently you can live in here indefinitely. At least I don't have any mods that require survival. So we're going to look at the IVA of the cockpit as well. And this is a far more traditional uh, cockpit from the Apollo program, kind of where you have the front view here with all the windows on the side. But yeah, there we go. We are space stationing. There is kind of an ugly decoupler cap on the front, but what can you do? Just think of it as, I don't know what to think of it as but my station is currently just pointing in one direction taking in the sunlight it's not so much there for science although if this were if there were little experiments that I could do in low gravity that were beneficial we can just imagine that that's what they're doing sitting there even if it's just how does a Kerbin survive in orbit like that so here is the refueling module that I have and I said that that's what we're going to do next, but this is my first attempt to launch one up, and I don't know. I just mainly wanted to show another set of explosions. You can see that I didn't even notice until crap was going on that I had the wrong pilots in here, but what the hell is that big fuel tank doing? It is just orbiting my command pod, and there is, there's a whole bunch of debris. If, this, if there was an actual economy in this game yet I would be out so much money because that was I believe 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 or 13 big fuel things or big fuel canisters but I'm gonna just ditch the uh, actual getting into orbit here we're gonna once again do the uh, try and adjust the orbit so that you can get closer and closer and unfortunately with the ship because I elected to not put RCS on it I actually had a lot of trouble getting close so we're gonna be seeing the tug in action with this video from about one kilometer out because that's about as close as I could get before actually using the flywheel and using the uh, advanced SAS to adjust myself would actually send me in the bad direction I would get different velocity here but all I'm gonna do now is just right click to 
undock my tug and there is the tug coming to life very important with your tug by the way I'm using a probe core on it which is great for some things because probe core or probe cores are great for a lot of things but unfortunately you can see the lack of batteries on it that means my solar panels are pretty much going to be it for the amount of power I have so I can really only do docking tugs or things like that in daylight so if I don't get this done pretty quickly I may have to kind of shit the bed a little bit and hope that everything stays close to each other at night but there we go Orbitropolis 2 out 1.6 kilometers away we note that we started this mission at about 1.1 kilometers away so it is slowly drifting away but my flight up here I wanted to have two f big fuel tanks to be able to latch on unfortunately I uh, underestimated the amount of fuel to get into orbit so I was only able to get one full and it's still one full 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 fuel tank is really important or really nice to have on there and I have some more efficient designs in mind for the future but there is a Keto Kerman I think that's how it's pronounced probably not I'm looking at some tiny lettering right now is now we're at 2.3 2.4 so this is go time this is my little tug has got to go back there and that's why you want to drop something like an LV 909 on your tug or a poodle engine or an ion engine maybe even just because they're very efficient they're small but sometimes if you have orbital mishaps like that you can get back to it and you can see that we're having more mishaps here the game's kind of starting to screw with me because although I have Orbitropolis 2 set as a target I did have to step away from the game a little bit to tend to family thingies and now suddenly I'm not actually seeing the display on how far away it is so that means I had to do this dock completely eyeballing it so no smart ASS for me on this instead it's total eyeball action using the nav ball using the free roam camera using my attempt at RCS and SAS to keep things going my monopropellants a little low but I'm not too concerned because I have a lot of monopropellant stored and I can cross feed through the docking ports or through anything so snap on there and guys there is proof of concept I have a space station I have a space tug and oh shit I accidentally hit the engine so my space station is now wiggling wobbling ah need to deactivate that engine but still proof and concept that's pretty cool I'm gonna be adding some other fuel tanks and everything off camera on there but otherwise yeah that is the uh, kit whole kit and caboodles if you will I have launched a space station and that means that that's gonna open the door for much much larger spacecraft that I can refuel in the atmosphere before sending out so I don't have a repeat of missions like ELO where the, I just didn't have enough fuel due to a bad launch but you know what that's it for now this is way to fail with a uh, Kerbal Space Program career mode and although we didn't do a lot in the way of science today uh, this mission is very important to open up some science possibilities for the future and next time I just want to give you a quick spoiler alert I'm going to be undertaking the most ambitious mission I've ever taken in Kerbal Space Program and it involves a lot of exploration and some pretty interesting designs I'd like to think so that's coming in the near future I'll give you a hint it has a lot to do with a nice jolly green giant but that's it for now I hope you enjoyed it feel free to subscribe I appreciate all of you all who uh, watch my Kerbal Space Program content I know it went dry for a little bit due to editing issues but uh, we're back in full swing so that's good to see but that's it for now take care